<clears throat> Steve, we're on the internet. Ooh. You ready to do some hardcore card jamming today? Is that what we're doing? It's 4 o'clock on a Wednesday. We're live at the internet. Kindred spirit salutations. And Steve Reynolds, thanks for joining me in the studio. Thank we're here. You. Look, we've got a loose topic today of the card magic of Ed Marlowe. This might be the last Marlowe book that uh, entered my collection. We were talking about the first Marlowe book because you're kind of an expert on Mr. Ed Marlowe. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say you're the expert? No, I wouldn't say. I learned from knowledgeable, knowledgeable people. And, uh, you know, I always say the humble I people. I spent a lot of time with it. That's an understatement. <laughs> I, I, could, I could probably win a game show if that was one of the categories. Man, I would love to have a Magic Jeopardy with Marlowe as a topic. and It would be you and Nathan uh, Caldwell. Caldwell. Who else is up there with the Marlowe? Bill knows everything, of course. I mean, does Bill Malone. We're talking, yeah, you know, he studied I'm, with him. Yeah, so, yeah. so Bill Malone is like the ultimate Marlowe student. I'm just wondering, does he have the... Well, some you know, guys... Like this. I asked you about this. I said... Hey, Steve, where was the old ram subtlety? I just asked him that in the kitchen. Where's the old ram subtlety? In the Published. new tops. In the new tops. Mint, mint one. Mint one. 1988. And this information just comes out of his brain automatically because he knows where the old ram subtlety was originally published. We're going to talk about Marlowe's old ram subtlety shortly. But does Bill have these kind of recall credits like that? Well, think? there's most... Uh, well, not most, but some of the guys that hung out with Marlowe had Marlowe. Yeah. So they didn't necessarily. Who needs the book <laughs> when you're and sitting the, with Marlowe every weekend? And you know. that happens, you know, with yeah. some of the guys. Right. right. Uh, some of the guys that were out of town were more heavy reading the books. But it's not like Bill didn't read the books. He read the books. Yeah. Right. Bill. But Bill has very personal experiences with Marlowe, which is even more valuable. And no doubt. The memory of, of the man. Know, one of the great watches for me, I'm not a big fan of the DVDs, but that Malone meets Marlowe series where Bill Malone does all the Marlowe tricks. So good. Yeah. Let me say hi to some kindred spirits in the house. Alex, good to see you. Sticky, bonjour, cookie, hey, Phoenix, Grindle, salutations, double you know dozer. Uh, you know, I pretend to on the internet, but you know, some of them are other. Hey, let me say hi to this guy. And I saw Sam, I saw you on Instagram yesterday. I'm going to tell this same story. Uh, in my mailbox yesterday, I got this from Samuel Goldbug. This is a Christmas card. We've given up hope of focusing that camera ever again. <laughs> but uh, Sam, you sent it in December. It arrived in February. Thank you for being one of a handful of people who thought enough to send me a Christmas card. No less one overseas. And what are you? Not even a legal drinking age in the United States. An Maybe old soul. Yeah. Oh, well, over there he's getting sauced every night with the lads at the pub. Yeah. <laughs> and, but uh, over here, I say I might be 17. So, yeah, uh, thanks for that. Uh, I had some other things I wanted to talk about before we get started. I have a deck of cards to give away. If you tuned into my last live stream, it was Sunday. Let me switch cameras here to a camera that might work a little better. This will be our close-up experience. <clears throat> this is the Bicycle ESP deck. If you haven't watched my last stream, you have about 30 seconds to go leave a comment and maybe win this pack. It's, uh, it's a standard deck of ESP cards and then a bunch of uh, specially printed gaffs and accoutrements to go with it. And someone's about to win it if you've commented there. Congratulations. I'm also giving away this deck. What is this deck? This is a Mardi Gras throw. And I actually found this in a drawer. I was supposed to give this away last year. My wife's boss, uh, Ryan, I can't pronounce his last name, but he rides on the Crew of Toth, which is a Mardi Gras parade that runs in New Orleans. And this is their throw from last year. So this is a throw from 2022. I was going to do kind of a big giveaway for this, but I've decided to do a proprietary giveaway for this. I'm handpicking the winner for this New Orleans giveaway, and I'm probably going to sign it to this guy. Hey, Gary Henderson, you win this deck. You've been the kindest, kindred spirit of this channel. You've sent packs of cards. Look, right here in front of me, I have a blue, 
I have a Turner Gold Seal deck because of Gary Henderson. He sent some decks. He supports channel members uh, unasked. And so Gary is getting this for his 500 plus deck collection. Now, for this ESP deck, and you can see what this is on Murphy's Magic site if you want to go look at what a professional bicycle e or what, is that the tutorial? Holy cow, don't flash that. <clears throat> We're going to give that away right now. Let me, uh, let's go back here. Steve is waiting with bated breath. Oh, yeah. He's just waiting to get back to the Marlowe talk. Let's go to the YouTube comment picker as we use the full power of the internet to pick a winner. I've put in the website. We put in the, do we put in the, oh, yeah, you, you have to have typed in. It's not anything goes. If you didn't watch the stream and didn't know you had to type in the words ESP deck, then you might not have included ESP in your comment and you might not be able to win. Someone who typed ESP is about to win the ESP deck. Pick a winner. Let's go. Hey, Dylan Young. All right. What is Dylan right? This special ESP deck, minimalism, blah, blah, blah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Dylan Young, I know you've been around for a while. I know you are an enthusiastic student of the art and always happy to give to the kindred spirits that are trying real hard. So congrats, Dylan. What you're going to want to do is send me an email. I will drop a, a tag, a comment in the video, let you know you're one in case you don't happen to see this. But send an email to conjure at conjure.com and I will get you this finely crafted ESP deck. Congratulations. There's other products on my desk, Steve. Um, uh, you want to talk about a couple of your things here? Uh, sure. Yeah, let's do this. Steve publishes things. We'll talk about this in a moment. This is the Olram file. What is this, Steve? What is this? This is a uh, a booklet I put out. Lots of Marlowe in here, I've, of course. Uh, I uh, have a number of... Uh, now, you some... say this is a booklet. Let's... It's a booklet. It's the output... Yeah, it's a magazine that I put out. Volume one of the output series. Yeah. Which is... At this point, how many volumes? Thir well, there's 30 issues. So there is a lot more than just... A this is the first one. The original had comb bound, and I right. really laid it out. Right. Uh, so, yeah. So in these outputs, you are this publishing is, original magic and resurfacing some Marlowe material. That had not been in print, or how I connect it historically to letters and uh, uh, some early unpublished things or original the original typed manuscripts or sections and connect the dots and basically create each issue that way sometimes i'll have a whole issue on one topic like issue 22 is all on uh all the uh, citations for spectator cuts of the aces from mint one or the new tops marlo had all those citations and i annotate and fill in the gaps right. to that material. So it's a study guide, and you learn more about the so, Some might say it's the real work. It's a compilation of certain topics. Right. And sometimes they yeah. are uh, random. And so I, because Steve is not Mr. Marketing, right, it takes me to pry his arm to talk about his products on here. You can go to stevereynoldsmagic.com. Well, it's a secret. <laughs> well, I know. Like Steve's like this. I need to vet my customers. Like he needs to make sure you you're the guy that gets this stuff. But I'm encouraging all kindred spirits to go to stevereynoldsmagic.com. Uh, in particular, you have uh oh, there's just so much there. If you like card work, you love Steve's site. I want to think I, I want to talk about Marlowe today in particular. Sure. And you have very much Marlowe centric information there. Big time, yeah. The Marlowe roadmap series might be uh of interest to yeah um well i did this because uh this was a video series that let I me did. go to your there's, website as you talk about yeah there's seven of them this was essentially the fundamentals of the rct or the revolutionary card technique series so i found the key basics the fundamentals and i'm not talking about double lifts i'm talking about grips and how to hold the deck and beveling and and these are the fundamentals of Marlowe's technical work. You know, it's, it wasn't random ideas. These, this it, was a, the non-static grips. Is this a subject matter we were talking with the members about? Uh, 
prior to this? Uh, I think so, maybe. It just has to do with the flexibility of the grip, but still keeping control. Okay. Having then. total control, but then being able to transition into a oh, natural oh, here, here's casual where you get all the handling. Yeah. Okay, yeah. then yeah. Or something like that. But that's what it is, Doug. It's the fundamentals of the RCT. And I go through the grips, the basic a squaring grip, which is the foundation of all the other many techniques. Um, even the angle palms stem from this overhand grip. That angular position is is part of the... Now, wait. Okay, hold on a second. I've got you here, and it's a little unclear what you're talking about. Would you be kind enough to clarify that? What point? is it that you're... What don't you... Would you grab a deck of cards and oh, elegantly yeah. demonstrate well, what you're trying to do? The angular grip is this, and it can be done on the table, and it can be done as a pharaoh, and it can be done Slow as, down, cowboy. The, as, what, the what grip? The angular grip. The, it's an angled grip. The angular grip. Well, in patented false shuffle, that's what Marlowe termed this kind of grip. See, these. this is... Phrase a phrase that's new to me. Well, I have not read the now the, obviously the patented false shuffle right. is a manuscript on, on riffle tabled shuffle. shuffled work. It's the second book in the in the um, riffle shuffle trilogy. The riffle shuffle trilogy, that's and right. he talks about an angle grip. Yeah, but as I started looking closely at the RCT, I noticed a lot of consistency in the grips. And it turns out the fundamental grip is this angular grip. You see it in, in, in all, even the angle, angle palms. You still see this angular position. Yeah, all right. And so yeah, you master I can, those. I can dig that. those are the, that's the basis of the fundamentals, which lead to basic techniques. And then combinations of techniques, which you then can really get into the stuff and have total control and confidence which is what Marlowe's techniques were designed to be, doable and repeatable. It really is. If you study his work in detail, if you heed the, read the lines and figure out where that finger goes in the next one, it's there for and you. And the concepts. These aren't just random things. These right. aren't just, oh, here's another idea. Here's another idea. No, when it comes to his technical uh, output, so mm -hmm. to speak, it's very systematic. It's a mm -hmm. systems approach. And so you see recurring themes of technique throughout the entire, you know. Are, are the roadmaps videos? Is Those are right? videos, yeah. So Jimmy, Jimmy Ferrister asks, hey, Jimmy, what's up? Uh, how long are these videos? Uh, an hour, two hours sometimes, depending on the topic. You know, it's an in-depth look at tabled pharaohs, riffle shuffling that leads into things that i do with the zero shuffle and things but these are just general shuffling skills how to riffle the deck in a way that you can do any of a number of different things. right not because people ask well i want to learn this particular technique i want to learn that when really if you learn the system under it the concepts now the whole world opens up to you Right. And it's not you're learning one thing. You're learning the whole, and then you build the skills on, on that foundation. And that's and then you can ride the the, the road to uh, better card magic. Go down the rabbit hole. Go down and right said. off the cliff. No. <laughs> so you had some interesting projects in the work. Let's talk about those in a moment. I, we've been on here long enough and haven't done any magic. And I, we were talking about before, like, doing some tricks and – I actually yeah. asked you to do one for my membership for the members. Yeah. I think yeah. I'd like you to I remember. <laughs> yeah, we were just doing this a few <laughs> minutes ago. Um, so this is not a Marlowe trick, but no. we, but uh, you mentioned Marlowe as a kind of precursor to the Elmsley count. And I'd well, like I'm not a precursor, a, a, an elaboration on a display, okay. uh, using the Elmsley count as a display. So, or even the Stanion count or any of the Visor count, any of the counts. Right. The, if you need this information, it's in my membership. This is why we keep the advanced stuff behind you. showing a four of a kind. That's what I mean. The Visor concept. I, like in the angle, I get confused. The angled grip with the Visor concept is a yeah, thing. But this is not any of that. This is a, this uh, is a trick. Let's just do the trick here. Let's yeah. put, let's get a, get a tricky look at this trick. All right. Well, this is a Brother Hammond effect brother john hammond brother john. another great card creator um 
one of my early influences. Yeah, right. You know, and still to this day, and uh, when I work on a method, I sometimes consider what would Hammond, how would Hammond do this? But this is one of the first effects I learned from from his work. And now, Doug, you get a choice. We have the aces and the jacks here. All right. You get a choice. Would you like the aces or the jacks? It's up to you, sir. I choose aces. Aces. I'll give you the aces and give me the jacks. Now, All right. let's use our imaginations. Do you see two black aces? I see them. I knew you could do it. And two black jacks. If I switch them, a little magic gesture, then over here I should have two black Jacks, what? yeah, and two black aces. That's cool. Yeah, it's not bad. Flick that. I, lo I love yeah. the flicking. That's the, that's the only way it works. <laughs> it's the only way it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now you got one, two, three aces All over right. here. Yeah. Aces. And one, two, three jacks over here. And you flick one last time. Flick. And look at that. All four aces. And over, or all four jacks and all four aces. The old swaparoo. The old swaparoo. Oh, that reminds me. You know, this is a kind of a, a fun, almost like a game. Remember, yeah. remember the game Follow the Leader. If we switch the leader cards, and they follow. Smooth. Yeah, and I'll do it again. Look, and just like this. I'm a snapper. You do that. And one, and this time, Doug, I won't even uncross my arms. That's so I mean, I didn't uncross my arms. You did not uncross <laughs> your arms. Wow. You know, I've watched you do that and there three times now. Well, I just, and the, the sneakiness of that last. <laughs> no, that's my favorite part. It's the one people don't like, but I, that's my favorite one. I mean, after watching it twice and liking it and, and then just realizing how you duped me, I don't like it either. I said <laughs> people don't like the. Not the effect, but that second phase because yeah. of the discrepancies. But oh no, I was that's my that. favorite part. Oh yeah, it's a perfect follow up for that actually. Yeah. Um, so uh, that is the precursor to what a lot of people know as Paul Harris's reset, uh, Brother John Hammond's underground transposition. That's right. From the well, the big book, the yellow book from Kaufman. Right. And I learned it on the Joe Stevens. Yeah. Uh, tape. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Thank you for sharing that. I wanted to talk a little about the Elmsley count and in particular the old Ram subtlety. Uh, old Ram Marlowe. Let's look at this first of all. What is this? Oh, this is the old Ram file. That's right. We yeah. go back to the gooder camera. You know, I I know these. I know what this is because I bought them in the 80s when John Rocker Bomber was releasing them. 89 to 93. To 93. I purchased these as they came out at the weekly gatherings of uh, the Knights of Slights. The Knights of Slights, Finnegan's, yeah. Applebee's. And uh, so, yeah. So, this was a zine John Rocker Bomber published of choice Marlowe items from his later years in life. And this is and early stuff and a whole bunch of stuff. It's a, it's a lot of stuff. A lot right. Of different yeah. Things. Yeah. And uh, if you're a card. A, a, a cardition certainly worth your attention and from what i understand maybe a project of yours that could come to fruition is bringing this to the light of new students that's right so i have a um all of the background on this from from john uh who who helped put this out he edited it with marlo and lee freed and uh, i was given permission to put it into a hardcover with additional material the original uh, photos, which were turned into drawings, are being colorized for a very eye-popping, pop-it-off-the-page kind of kind of scenario. And then I have enough of the Marlowe material to put the final issue or, uh, you know, the final issue. There were 16 issues, and this will be a bonus issue in the very back, which will have a full index and all the bells and whistles. Yeah. And so it's being worked on right now, and, and it's coming – Probably within the month it should be done. And this is as you enter what will be it will be a hardcover book, the whole it'll be a hard yes, deluxe right. editions and, and all there, of that. Initially there'll be a deluxe and then then the regular. I love that you're taking the steps to do this because you are a prolific author and and your work is serious and deserves. I grew that. up uh, 
that's how I learned, you know. Yeah, and uh, I know, man. Whether know. whatever the uh, environment is out there is not relevant to me. It's it's all about the work and all yeah. about my mentors and promoting them and and never forgetting. That's it. Now, if I'm able to do more and you know people buy it, I can do more things. Yeah. And so this is my leap into the fray. And into the fire. Well, it's a progressive. It's a progression, and you're getting to the point where you're now going to start producing hardcover books. I look forward to this and what is likely to be the beginning of a series of uh, Marlowe centric oh, yeah. and and my book and too. your stuff. I, as well. I haven't put a. I mean, I put out all these many things over the years and videos. But you know, I you have some of them are really really uh, well respected by the community. We kind of browsed over some of your things. I blinked off it, but your work on the the false shuffles are legendary. Yeah. If you guys have been around my channel, you you know Steve Shuffle work. It's the it's the coolest. Um as I was blinking around, let me mention this. I uh, beat Steve and I, I, I told Steve Zolke that we would let our audience know. Let's talk about the senior tour for a minute, Steve. Okay. This is. Uh, are you a senior? I mean, I guess as of last year, we are. <laughs> I'm officially seniors. a senior. I wasn't until April of 2022. This is the website for April of 2023. What are we part of? An incredible educational and inter top entertainment opportunity for all ages. I better read this. For all ages, so I know. This is a mini convention of close-up magic expertise. So Steve and I will be pilgrim making the pilgrimage to, it's right outside of St. Louis. It's limited to 150. I'm pretty sure this thing's going to sell out this year as the lineup is stellar. They are, uh, it's a sequel of last year with some added talent that I am happy to see. Uh, Howard Hamburg's back, my new, my new BFF, Jimmy's there. Alan Ackerman is going to be on hand, Bill Goodwin. Uh, Randy Wakeman has been added to the bill I'm this year. I'm looking forward to oh, that. Oh man, I can't wait to talk to Randy. That's going to be an interesting chat, and sure. uh, he he's one of the Marlowe files that can oh, big time, you know yeah. keep mm -hmm. keep up with you, and I guess Alan as well, Alan. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, we're going to be there with all of these guys. Ryan Bliss. I just uh, oh, saw Ryan Bliss at uh, Ryan's a cool yeah. cat. Kevin Kelly's at on the, the bill this year. Mike Powers. If you like card tricks and you just like hanging out with cool magic friends, the venue is awesome. Yes. It really is a great venue for a magic convention. The camaraderie is top tier and the talent's awesome. Uh, we're going to be there in April. Looking forward to it. Hope to see some kindred spirits there. All right. Talked about it. That was fast, Doug. Take a man. breath. I'm going pro. I'm working on my brand <laughs> deals. Let's uh, drink the vodka and move on. Oh. Uh, I, I spent a, a large time just self-absorbed with Steve and have not been focusing on the kindred spirits. If y'all have questions or want my attention, you have it now. Uh, oh, here's a good question from Jake. Uh, for Steve, any deals for bundles? I'm interested in the Road to Marlowe books. Is this something you have ready to go or a conversation? Maybe email me. Uh, I, they're up on the site. I can, I, I'm thinking about doing a bundle and this may be the, uh, catalyst but see, I have it. some insider information and I know that you have offered select bundles. You have insider information Listen, I've been mine. to conventions where you're like, Hey guys, if you buy the bundle, it's this, but it's not something you normally advertise. It's for lectures. And yeah. Stuff, it's you know. for special appearances. Yeah. So possibly it's so much, you should have something like so that. So you can uh, find me on Facebook or my email or through my website there's a link to steve's website there there's okay. a contact information there yo yeah Let's and i see. just recently edited them down a little bit um tightened some of the spots up so it's good a nice solid uh everything except that header that says watch out for output 24 no, that's the website don't worry about oh, that i'm on 30 now so um do you have a, we're asking about favorite decks. Do you have a favorite deck, Steve? Oh, well, you know, I'm at, I've been at a convention because I have a pack of tally hoes. But Let's see, what are those? Uh, generally, are those I, your favorite? Bring them back no, out. No, they're not my favorite, but you know, uh, they're a nice, nice okay, deck. You're skirting you know, the question. Do you have a favorite? <laughs> no, no, I don't either. Red bikes is what I use. I use blue bikes, yeah, because they're better than red. I've heard. You know, I've heard I'm arguments. Kidding. Now, kidding. listen, I know Garrett <laughs> Thomas is in the blue corner. He says this. This is an interesting discussion that why, you know, because Vernon's always like, 
you got to do red because red shows up better, you know. But look, maybe you don't sure. want it to show up better. Maybe you want it to be in the shadows. Maybe the deck doesn't need to be the forefront of it. I want my deck to be in the shadows. So now blue is less focused. So you could consider a blue deck to keep your stuff in the shadows. I don't want the them shadows. to see anything. Yeah. The tricks. <laughs> Steve's working on a mime act with no magic and zero entertainment value. Uh, the website for the convention, I linked it in the description of this video. Look at me being professional. Check it out, Matthew. Yeah, connect with Steve. <clears throat> so where can you get that ESP deck? I don't know where you can get it. I don't know. If you didn't win it from me, I'm not sure. Um, you know you can email me and I'll try and help you out beyond this if I can. Generally, you go to Vanishing Inc. They have most of the commercial releases that are out there. Someone was talking about false counts. I wanted to briefly mention the, the old Ram count only because I put old Ram in the thumbnail. Can we talk about the old Ram count briefly, Steve? Yeah, it's uh, okay. I learned it. Uh, it's not even a count, right? It's a, it's a display. The old Ram subtlety. Subtlety. Yeah. Which I always consider as an option to the Elmsley count. It's been used in that way. In like Ace Assemblies back in the day for like um, the red blue like Lynn Cyril's effect, you know the oh, ultimate yeah. aces. Yeah, right. So Marla had uh, as he's showing the yeah, arrival. And, and can you briefly show what it is? And maybe first, like start with Jacks doing Elmsley count, and then show maybe how the old Ram subtlety. I'm assuming that at this and, point, and anyone... it's not so much an alternative, but but it can be depending on the application, I'm sure. But um, Three jacks and an X card? Yeah, three jacks and an X card. So this That's is the a... worst uh, movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> I figure at this point all the hardcore are here, so it's like yeah. the plot's irrelevant. So normally you would maybe show four jacks here, right? Hey, and while you're doing this, uh, as you were doing the Elmsley count in our members session, you talked a little bit about doing that fair-handed display. Oh, uh, this is such a nice touch. Well, I learned it back in the back in Card Finesse too, and it's attributed uh, to Bob Stencil. But it's it's just this more casual yeah. display of the cards as opposed to this count. I mean, it's pretty standard Here's the now. Thing. But Steve don't like talking about methods on the internet at all. So I know, this is, we're lucky he's talking about anything right I now. I don't even know why I brought it up. He's going to ask me to burn this stream <laughs> afterwards. Now, we did a member session with the secrets, but I do want to talk about a Marlowe piece of history okay. that's important. Right? So, But this is the this is the RM subtlety. You might have, well, let's get the right cards here. What are the right cards? <laughs> it, well, it depends on the effect, right? There it we go. What you're like doing. this, you show two here. Two jacks. And you show two here. And two jacks. Right. And then there would be a secret display of some kind. But that's what it looks like. You mentioned it was published in the New Tops. It had a whole article in the New Tops or in Mint One. And there's a whole article with effects and basic uh, applications that Do were used. Do you recall used. any of the effects? Yeah, but they're a little um, involved, in, yeah. not not method wise, but just setup wise. Right. I imagine many students are familiar with Nick Trost's eight card brainwave, and if you've seen that trick where someone picks the only red card of eight blue cards or the only blue card of eight red cards, that's that uses the old ram subtlety probably as good as any effect ever has. But yeah, you haven't read Mint. <laughs> well, I look forward to the day there is magic jeopardy with Marlowe questions. I'll be there losing, but I'll be there trying. You can phone a friend. Yeah, my yeah, number. Marlowe. I'm, <laughs> I mean, I'm more of a general practitioner than the that's Marlowe fine. file. Everybody, you know, you know, I'll, cool. I'll do good with the rope it's magic just the way questions. I was, I was brought up into Marlowe. Marlowe. Yeah, and that's that. All right, let's get a Marlowe question. Who's got a Marlowe question? You get bonus points if you come up with a Marlowe question. Alex wants to know how long you've been doing magic. Oh, uh, well, seriously, since I was 15, but I got into magic and enjoyed it since I was about seven. 
Yeah. But 15, I was, or 13, 14, I had the um, counts, cuts, moves, and subtlety, which led me into the Hammond stuff when I. In, it's such a bizarre book to start when with. When I was 15, I got the Hammond uh, tape from Joe Stevens, who just passed away. And mm -hmm. I remember him. Uh, but um, Joe Stevens, so important. Yeah. And uh, anyway, Ooh. yeah. So 15. Juicy I got question. Really, real, what? Here's a juicy one. Oh, you got a juicy one. Cutting you off. What's your favorite devilish miracle? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's funny. No, really. Which favorite one? Well, there is. There, what's my favorite? I mean, would you say there is only one? There can be only one. The no. one Marlowe published. No, uh, no. Do you study this subject in your uh, output series? Yeah, the devilish uh, miracle. Issue three and five are devoted to that topic. Two full issues. So, which one's your favorite? Uh, it's combination. It's one of those effects that you can have combinations. It's like of. babies. There's no it's, favorite. My favorite combination is what Marlowe seemed to, according to the notes that I published in, in Output 5, went back. Of course, we know the method in the t Marlowe Without Tears was his, I mean, that goes back to the 40s. Um, Originally published as a standalone manuscript, this is like the devilish yeah, miracle. But that particular method was a little bit more elaborate than the original one from forty-eight, yeah. right? Yeah, that was published. But the ending, aside from you know, uh, instead of doing the small packet mm -hmm. reveal at the end, which is anticlimactic, the high point is the spread where it appears in the middle. That's the high point. Yeah, uh, shout out to Kevin right. Wise the, for that. Yes, high spot for him, which is a wrestling term. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rev the revelation was so. Then I have a certain favorite switch that I do to get into it, and uh, and then but I go back to the original and just spread the cards yeah. to reveal, as opposed to doing I, that I, extra I, effect. Now that extra effect can be done without having it become an anticlimax by letting that part breathe a little right. bit. Right, and this is something we've talked about before, yeah. and that's you what that a lot breathe. of people miss. And, that you can really and the make psychology, this... yeah. the psychology of them thinking or not knowing that you're hiding the card, but maybe vaguely thinking that it could possibly be hidden, that subtlety is what makes it the devilish miracle. All right, we're moving on. I'm realizing probably half these psychological people twist. don't even know what we're talking about. The devilish know. miracle. <laughs> it's not a trick you can easily The explain. answer is I have a particular combination that I enjoy the most. Look, the future of magic is asking, what's your favorite trick performed by Ed? And, oh, uh, the devilish miracle. <laughs> is it really? Is that your favorite <laughs> Marlowe? Is thing. it really? Favorite uh -huh. Marlowe trick? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, what's your, but, uh, what's think your second that. favorite? Uh, my second favorite to do for the to do for the public yeah. and in a set in a, a table set, mm -hmm. and my favorite ace assembly is the um, bluff ace assembly. Yeah, maybe the bluff ace assembly. That's choice. that's just yeah, solid. It really is. And that's fifties hand. That's Marlo in the fifties. Yeah, right out of the Cardition. You don't even need to finesse that trick at all, right? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's just so good. That's a good one. Look it up, man. Uh, Marlo's bluff ace assembly, Phoenix. Um <clears throat> good questions. Good answer, Steve. There's other ones that are a little more obscure that I really dig. And but you know, those are the ones the nice solid. Look, ones. for a non-gaffed handling, that one is just, you know, what it what it has is a nice discernible climax, you yeah. know, and it uses a weakness to make it a strength, I think, to provide that climax. Yeah. Yeah. Because the ace go the leader ace goes and travels. Yeah. Yeah. Get rid of that. Uh, X card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. What else did I have to do today? Was there something I missed, Steve? <laughs> Don't I you have a list? I did. I, I, I think the list was short. Oh, <laughs> there's we, only two things. We did those there. two things. We, we talked about your things. We did some. Uh... Oh, Starling Climax. See yeah. Steve's ready to go, and I was just about to give you the, the easy exit. Steve's like, how long is this thing going to be? I said, about a half hour, and we're 35 minutes in. He still wants to read questions. Let's put it up here. Can we talk about a startling climax? i never seen anyone do it. Do you know this effect? Is this effect startling climax? Yeah, yeah. Mar and and Bill does it on the, on, the t on the video. Maybe just by name I don't know it. Is it an effect you can demonstrate? It's in, it's in uh, 
it's an advanced fingertip control on the back. Is that all we're getting? What's the effect of the a effect, startling climate? Basically, well, <clears throat> there is a, a handling of this in the book, uh, Paul LaPaul book. What is the effect? <laughs> well, I thought you might remember it. I mentioned the book. But. I'm, I'm trying to be the voice for the <laughs> students. And yeah, I might well, know the how, LaPaul book by heart. This but is can how you tell us goes. what the effect is? <laughs> sure. So you have two cards picked, halves in each ha pocket. You take one out from this pocket, right? It's the wrong. Oh, well, let's see. Yeah. You take, and then you miss finding the other one in the other pocket. And then this one changes into the second selection. Oh, okay. And it uses some very, you know, sneaky ways to get into that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, it's a magician in trouble. Yeah, and uh, kind of, yeah, it's got that quality to it. All right. So I'm, I don't know what to, else unsure. to say. I'm not going to tip. I'm not yeah. going to demo it. We're not going to get anything else out of this because, guy. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. David Miller wants to know. This is probably an inside joke, but what do you know about Marla's work on Tasha Roon? Oh. <laughs> David Miller. Yeah. That's uh, where you have the nickel on top of the yeah. thing that changes. Did Marlo publish stuff in the ORAM file on that? Not on that, no. Where did he uh, put his work on that trick? Well, I that know I've seen it. that's uh, Bob dry, uh, Dryback. Mm -hmm. Tasha Roon, the change Tasha with Roon. the coin on top of the face right. card. Yeah. Right? And uh, Marlo had a way to get into that and... Um, in fact, using a uh, a control that he had in the Devilish Miracle. <laughs> Where was that published? I'm like Paul Bearer's review. Paul Bearer's review. That's what I'm saying. He knows. He knows it's in the Paul Bearer's I, review. I got lucky on that one. I was just uh, reading it. Actually, that's why Dave brought it up. <laughs> that was a, that was a uh, softball question. This is a good question. I think Marlo without tears. Is that a good place to start? It is a great place to start. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not all tearless. Right. You know, a, a book that is Marla Without Tears and the second item or one of the first items is a two-second side steal. Uh, yeah. Know. Right. So it requires uh, this a little the, vision. But it's filled with subtle stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just Marlo wanted to add more stuff to it just to round it out. But the original concept was to be more subtleties and things of that nature. I would tend so to. So you get a little challenge, but you also get the the subtlety. I I say if you want good Marlowe, get the Cardition. Yeah, like, that's, that's like another great, great place to start. A great selection. You of really Marlo can Cardition. start anywhere. Okay, you can start anywhere. Jump in. It's like John told me years ago. There is no shallow end. Mm -hmm. You jump in, and uh, you know. Yeah, and basically, you you work with what you can do. You are inspired by what you can't do. Yep. Uh, you're, in, you know, um, inspired also to go on the adventure of tracking down uh, the books. And that's simply just going on a, a site online, but actually digging into the books and finding them. I know kind of it's weird now because a lot of these books are overpriced now. They're more, more collector's items now as opposed to you know, technical descriptions to teach students. They're more Yeah, like, but if you want the information, you can find it. Yeah, yeah. By hook or crook, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. But that's the adventure, you know. Yep. You create your own way. It's an invaluable experience that I think a lot of modern practitioners won't get to experience because of the prevalence of the medium we're on right now. And God bless you, YouTube. But hey, if you're not reading books, you're missing the boat. That's where all the best information is. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's the ultimate. And a lesson. lot of the crappy information. <laughs> Gary Henderson, good to see you. I hope you got the news. You got the Mardi Gras deck coming your way, brother. I announced that earlier. I didn't see if you were here, but I'm going to send you this pack. I'll get it in the mail this weekend. You were our first winner today. Dylan Young won the ESP deck. Congratulations, Dylan. Email me. We'll get that off to you. I'm about to wrap this up, and then we're going to go have a real card session and go down the real oh, rabbit I'm done. Hole. I'm done. You're out of here. <laughs> Thank you all. It was great. I had fun.
Yeah, it's been a good time, man. And, uh, you know, you're right down the road, so you're welcome back any time. Steve doesn't ask enough. But I could see him here every week. It, you could just be Doug. I would and, love to do it. We could just be Doug yeah, and Steve. Not every week. We should but... do a, we could do a, like a Marlowe podcast sure. or something. Come sure. Just, ask come me here. anything, and I'll ask you something. Episode 31, Fingertip Control. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen. I can't get what I need to get done in my life on a daily basis, but it's been a pleasure doing it with you today, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you. I hope it's sooner, but if not, we'll see you at the seniors tour right outside. Oh, I'll come back before then. Yeah, you say that, but when is it? <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it up, kindred spirits. Thanks for the hang. See you next time and ciao for now. Au revoir.